What is up, Gundam Meisters and Innovators? I am just a simple new type, and in this episode, we are concluding Season 1 of Mobile Suit Gundam 00. Last time, Alejandro betrayed Celestial Being and gave GN Drives, effectively making everyone equal technologically. Sumeragi copied as much data from Veda and shifted all operation to the Ptolemaeus. The best pilots from all three nations coordinated an attack against them. This time, the Ptolemaeus is attacked. Ali takes a throne Gundam, and Alejandro and Setsuna engage in battle. So let's get into this. Lassie in the GM Arms begins the docking sequence. He asks about Lock-On. It seems he is in critical condition. He will survive, but he lost his shooting eye. The doctor informs him that it will take three weeks to regenerate a new eye for him. But Lock-On doesn't want to go through the process and thinks he could get the job done with Hato. Billy and Graham are watching the news where the public is being informed of the new Jinx mobile suit and a new operation called Fallen Angel. Graham wonders about his new flag. He is upgrading it with a GN Tau Drive. The SVMS-01X Union Flag Custom 2 is a modified version of Graham's custom flag with the Jinx GN Tau Drive added. Billy was able to convince his uncle, Homer Katagiri, to get him an extra GN Drive. He will play a bigger role in the second season. Adding the drive prevented the custom flag from transforming into mobile armor mode. It is equipped with a 20mm machine gun on the abdomen, a GN beam saber that they stole, a defense rod, and a GN field. Meanwhile, Sergei and Soma launch with their Jinx team. Felt is concerned for Lock-On and goes to see him, but he is meeting with Pink Cardigan Man. Tiedia tells him that he lost connection to Veda. Due to his codependency issues with a server, Lock-On ensures him that they can complete the plan without Veda. Trinity is on the run, and they are almost out of food. Johan contacts Wang and asks for help getting them up into space, but she tells the Trinity team that they are out of time and people are heading to their location. HRL is able to spot them. The particle generation on the Jian Tao drives of the Trinity team are at 30%. They have to play this conservatively. They are able to hold their own and soon retreat. Soma wants to follow, but Sergei reminds her that their drives will be dead soon and to be patient. Ribbons has cleared level 6 of Veda and has made it to the final level. On the Tolemi, Setsuna wants to go down and save the Trinity team. Lass and Setsuna will go down. Even though they may not be able to make it back into space if anything goes wrong, Setsuna wants to do this to find the true meaning of the Gundam. Sumeragi gives them a mission plan and tells them to return safely. Nina is mad that her throne dryer was damaged. That is when an AEU enact lands. It is Ali Al Sanchez. They want to know if Laguna Harvey sent them. He tells them that Laguna is dead, and with no hesitation, he shoots and kills Mikkel. He shoots Johan as well, but allows him and Nina to escape. Ali gets in Mikkel's throne's Y and chases the two. If he is able to bypass the biometrics of the thrones, that means he is getting assistance from Veda. Ali tears through throne Ein's, killing Johan. He begins his chase for Nina. But Setsuna attacks. He realizes that Ali is the pilot of the throne Gundam. Now that Ali is on a level playing field, he has the upper hand against Setsuna. It isn't looking good for the Gundam. Ribbons completes level 7 and out pops a cryo chamber. It is the body of Aeolia Schoenberg. Alejandro begins shooting at it and laughing. He kills Aeolia's body. But this triggers another message by Schoenberg. Of course, he expected that humanity would still try to find a way to move towards war even after he was long gone. Ribbons realizes it was a trap all along. By killing his body, they activated a failsafe. The failsafe is the Trans Am system, which activates on Gundam Exia. The Trans Am system gives access to the full ability of the original Gundam GN drives. It allows the drive to fully release all of the compressed GN particles accumulated and operate at a higher output, essentially overclocking the Gundam. This allows Exia to move at fast speeds, leaving a red afterimage. Setsuna has no idea what is going on. But another message from Schoenberg plays in the cockpit. This message plays to the Ptolemaeus crew as well. Schoenberg tells them about the Trans Am system. Exia is able to tear through the throne Gundam, but Ali makes his escape. Setsuna contacts the Ptolemy and informs them that Ali stole one of the throne Gundams and killed Mikkel. He is heading back to the ship. Sumeragi knows the next battle will play out at the L1 point. At Lagrange 1, Virginia-class ships gather. The Virginia-class ship is originally created by the Union, but is supplied to the UN during the joint venture. This ship is the biggest built of its time. It is equipped with linear rail cannons, missile launchers, and has a maximum capacity of 12 mobile suits for operation. Ali is on board under his AEU identity, Gary Badge. He meets with Sergei, who wants to know how he captured the Gundam. 
He says that it is a business secret. While heading back to the ship, Lass tells Setana that he believes that Celestial Bing is meant to exist more as a symbol. Like Batman, he gets a message that the Ptolemaeus has contacted you and fleets. Lock-on preps for the battle, but he is locked into his room. Tyria did this. In his own way, he is trying to protect Lock-on. Tyria and Alleluia launch. They note that Ali is fighting with the UN. Kyrios is equipped with the Tail Booster. This is a module which drastically improves the mobility. An extra Gian cannon is also added. Alleluia is able to dodge the Jinx's attack. Ali sneaks behind Tyria and the two begin fighting. The Throne Gundam uses its fangs to penetrate the Gian field. Multiple Jinx begin blasting Virtue. Soma rushes in and damages Alleluia's tail booster. He is able to sense her like before. Sergei comes in and the two double team Kyrios. That is when he activates the Trans Am system. Hallelujah decides to help Alleluia. He tells himself that he will block Soma's brainwaves. The psychopath in his head is doing something useful. As Virtue takes a beating, Tieria too is able to activate the Transam. It allows his Gian Bazooka to output an even bigger blast on the level of a battleship cannon. That is when Lock-On approaches in Dynami's Gian Armor Type D. The Gian 002 GNR 001 D Gian Armor Type D is the product of combining the Gian Arms Type D and Dynami's. When added, the GM long range shooting capabilities are boosted by the GN Arms GN Twin Rifle and the large size missile container, both meant for anti fleet combat. Claw arms are added for ranged combat and a large size GN cannon for long range bombardments. The GN field is greatly enhanced as well. He begins a long range bombardment on the Jinx squad. With the Trans Am system, they were able to force the team to retreat, but Lockon is still heading towards the enemy fleet on his own. He begins attacking when the Throne's Y attacks him. Remember, Lockon now knows that Ali was the leader of the terrorists who killed his parents. He forgave Setsuna, who physically murdered them, but he doesn't forgive Ali for bringing innocent people into war. Ali realizes that he can't see well on his right side. He uses the fangs to surround and attack Dynamis. His Gundam is dead in the water. Lockon gets out of the mobile suit and tells Hato to take Dynamis back to the ship. He first detaches the sniper rifle as well as the control unit in the cockpit. He is going to fire this sucker manually. Hidden in the asteroids, Throne's Y spots Lockon. He fires on the throne Gundam and nicks it. But Ali shoots the sniper, throwing Lockon out in the space. Setsuna makes his way to their location, but the sniper rifle explodes, taking Lockon with it. Dynamis returns to the ship. Hato makes everyone sad by repeating the same words over and over. Over. Everyone knows Lakon is dead. Tieria cries about Lakon and takes his anger out on Setsuna, but Sumeragi comes in and slaps Tieria for fighting with this team. Felt cries over Lakon while holding Hato. With the human fleet, Sergei learns that they started their mission with 27 Jinx mobile suits and now only have 11. They lost 16 during this battle, but that also tells us that they lost 3 during their first battle with Celestial Being. Katie Manikin tells him that the UN are sending reinforcements. They wonder if they're sending out more Gian drives. Patrick makes his way back to the ship after the battle. As they hide out in the asteroid field, the Ptolemaeus team plans their next move. They get data from Dynamis that shows that it was Ali who killed Lakon. Setsuna wonders if he did this all for vengeance, but then he remembers Lakon and even Las saying that one must live with a purpose to carry out the will of the dead. The Yuan fleet approaches a new golden mobile armor. This is the Alvatore piloted by Alejandro. The GNMA XCVII Alvatore, or 98 Alvatore if it is Roman numerals, was developed by Alejandro with the help of the innovators, which we will see soon. It was originally developed off of the One Gundam, and its specialty is hyper-focused power. This is because of the seven Gian Tau drives on its back. It is equipped with a powerful Gian Beam Cannon, 22 side beam cannons, 6 large Gian Fangs, a combat arm, and even more beam cannons. This will go on to inspire large use mobile armors that we will see in Season 2. While prepping for the next battle, the Ptolemaeus bridge crew finally tell each other their real names and history. They get to know the real them before their potential death. 
Felt leaves a letter in Lakon's cockpit. They decide to leave Hato in the hands of whomever becomes the next celestial being. That is when they detect ships approaching. The Jinx squad approaches with Alejandro. The Alvatore fires its beam cannon and hits the port side of the ship. Hallelujah takes over for Alleluia and begins attacking Soma. Alejandro hits the Tolemi once again, this time taking out the medbay in the process. Bye random celestial being doctor, you served your one purpose then died. The ship is unable to generate a Gian field. Tieria activates the Trans Am system, but they learned last time that it is a power drainer, so they have to be careful. Even with the Trans Am, he is getting destroyed. Patrick Colasar goes to attack Tieria, and they both shoot at each other. The Jinx body is destroyed, while Natalie's head is hit. Sumeragi and Ian Vashti head out in the assault container. This is a tactical transport box that can murder you. It has a Gian condenser and a Gian field for defense. Weapons include a Gian large beam cannon, beam guns, and eight Gian missile launchers. They are the last line of defense for the Ptolemaeus, but they aren't fast enough. One Jinx shoots the bridge. Lichty goes to protect Christina as the bridge explodes. He protects Chris from the blast to reveal that he is more cyborg than human. He was almost killed during the solar power wars and brought back to life. His only role during this series was having feelings for Chris. In his final moments, she reciprocates his feelings. Sumeragi contacts Chris, but we find out that she too is badly injured. The Ptolemaeus explodes, killing Lichty and Chris. Loss and Setsuna are in an assault container. He and Alejandro touch Gian Fields together. Hot. He ejects Exia and himself in the Gian arms. Sumeragi, Felt, and Ian make it back to the damaged Ptolemaeus to find the Gundam Meisters are struggling. Alleluia gives Hallelujah a pep talk. He pulls his hair back and attacks Soma. Sets in a docks with the Gian arms to form the Gian armor type E. The Gian 001, Gian R 001 E, Gian armor type E is the combined power of the Gian arms type E and Exia. With the Gian armor type E, the Exia's close combat capabilities are boosted by the Gian arms. Large sized Gian swords, Gian beam guns, as well as claws, and the support machine's large sized Gian cannons are also available for ranged bombardments. The whole Gian Armor Type E can be controlled from Exia, but its controls can also be shared with the Gian Arms. This shared controlled scheme reduces the burden of the Gundam Meister, who can better focus on the battle at hand. The two engage in battle, uh, three since lasses in the Gian Arms, I guess. They hold their own, but Alejandro does a great deal of damage to the Gian Arms, injuring Lass. He uses his Gundam Rage to tear through the mobile armor. The Alvatore explodes. Sergei and Soma aren't enough to take down Halle Hallelujah. He activates the Trans Am system. Sergei tries to lala himself for Soma, but the super soldier is able to stop Kirios and shoot him in the eye. As Soma helps Sergei, Hallelujah realizes it is a girl named Mari. Out of the rubble comes Alejandro and the Alvaron. The GNMS XCVII Alvaron, or 97 Alvaron if it's Roman numerals, is a mobile suit built into the Alvatore, and like the mobile armor, it is based off of the one Gundam. This mobile suit took the data from all three of the throne Gundams as well. Alvaron serves as a short to medium range unit with excellent mobility. The Alvatore and Alvaron can function independently, but both can be controlled within the Alvaron cockpit. Weapons include the GM Beam Rifle, the GM Beam Saber, and a 90 degree rotatable beam cannon. It also has one of the best GM fields we have seen thus far. Exia realizes that Alejandro is the one who has been twisting Schoenberg's words. Now that his plan is ruined, he is going for a scorched earth kind of ending. The Alvaron fires its beam cannon at Setsuna. He uses the Trans Am system to dodge. Setsuna thinks back to a conversation with Lockon, who tells him why Exia has a physical blade weapon. It is because it could penetrate the Gian fields. Lockon says that he is the trump card. He uses his sword on Alvaron and tears through the cockpit. As Alejandro bleeds out, Ribbons calls him and pulls the most obvious fast one on him. The Alvaron explodes. Setsuna is exhausted, but a flag with a Gian drive rushes in. It is Graham. The two begin fighting with beam sabers. He realizes that Graham is the guy he met in Krugus that one time. Graham says that he isn't doing this for the world. He is fighting him for his own selfish reasons. They attack with the beam sabers and both mobile suits go up in flames. Alleluia is in control again. 
He knows that Hallelujah knew about Mari this whole time. Setsuna leaves a letter with Marina. He was looking for a path out through her, but he knows that his path is different. Exia drifts off. AD 2312. Saji writes a letter to Luis, who no longer responds to him. He has achieved his dream of going into space and is working for the Solar Tower. While on a spacewalk, we see the green glow of the Gundam. Celestial being hasn't been seen for years. 328 countries agreed to merge to form the Earth's Sphere Federation. All militaries will be dissolved into one Federation peacekeeping army. The world seems to be united for now. We see a fleet of the new Jinx 3. More on that next season. On the moon, Ribbons assembles a team of innovators. Ian Vashti is meeting with Wang and Hong Long. Ian shows the two the new O Gundam. They want to use Exeus Gene Drive in the old Gundam. They look over to a container labeled Gundam 00. And that will conclude Season 1 of Mobile Suit Gundam 00. I felt this was a relatively satisfying ending, but Alejandro in a mobile suit and mobile armor at the end were so unnecessary and didn't really serve the story. I guess you have to have a giant end battle, so I guess I don't blame them. Also, this entire season was motivation for what Luis and Saji do in the second season. So the whole time, you are just following two random people slightly adjacent to the story with no closure. Next time, we will see Luis get involved. Saji will find out who Setsuna truly is. And were you sad about Lock-On's death? Well, he has a twin brother, so it will be like he never left next season. But that will do it for now, new types. Remember, even a Hato can bring out emotion. Peace.